There's two big problems with Azure AD conditional access policies, setting them up the way you want, and then testing and validating that the policies do what you expect them to do. And that's because it's not always clear. So I'm gonna show you how to set up 14 of the most common CA policies and test them all in less than two minutes. There we are over in the Azure portal and we're looking at Azure Active Directory. Now to find conditional access rules, you scroll down on the left and go to security. Then we click over here on conditional access. All right, ready, start the clock. 14 policies, here we go. And we're gonna start from a new template, go to identities, hit next, and then we're going to hit next and create our first policy. Then we're just gonna go right back and we're gonna do it again, there's our second policy. And then after that's done, we'll go back and pick our third policy to block legacy authentication and okay, create, and then new policy again, and this one will require multi-factor for all users. And one more, come on now, go back. Uh, multi-factor for guest authentication, and require multi-factor for Azure management and uh, multi-factor for risky sign-ins. Another one, come on, come on, come on, come on. And uh, require password for high risk users, password changes. Okay, and now we have device policies. So uh, this one is for hybrid join devices. And then we have another, come on, come on, device, uh, come on. Uh, block access for unknown and unsupported platforms and d devices and persistent, no persistent browser sessions. And we'll add another one for devices. Almost there. Come on. Uh, require approved client uh, app protection uh, devices again. And require compliant joined uh, hybrid devices. And oh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, and unmanaged devices. And last one, I think, on, uh, wait, no, that's it, I did it. Okay, cool. So now if we go back to conditional access, uh, oh, don't hit cancel. Okay, uh, now we have the what if. Okay, so first thing we have to do is we have to pick a user and uh, we'll go with uh, this guy. And then we have our cloud apps, that'll be any, all the rest of these things are optional and we can click what if and there's all of our policies tested. Now the purpose of all of these templates is to give you a one-click deployment of the most common policy scenarios like you just saw. And of course, you can see what's in those policies and then tweak them for your own environment. Each policy has a summary and they're all kind of formatted here in the same way, starting with the policy name. Then you have your users and excluded users in particular. Now when setting something up like MFA and other policies that are gonna have some deny access especially to the Azure portal, you would always, always, always want to have some excluded cloud admin users or even better, a break glass account. And you've seen those in case of emergency break glass, right? And this is the same thing, just in Azure. A break glass account is not a synced account and it doesn't have any Azure security controls on it like MFA or privilege identity management. Then if something goes wrong in your CA policies and everybody's locked out of your environment, you can still get back in by breaking the glass. And that's why your current user is excluded over here, just for safety. And after that, we have all of the Azure AD roles that this policy will be enforced on. And you can see that includes your global admins. Next, we have the list of cloud apps, and this would also include the Azure management portal. Finally, the granted control here comes from requiring MFA. So the policy is basically saying all users have to pass MFA in order to use anything in Azure. And it's exactly the same on the device policy side. Now over here on what if, you have a ton of options for testing. Users, guests, service principals, no groups at this point, but I'm sure that'll improve because this is in preview right now. After you pick who you're measuring your policies against, you then can pick a specific cloud application or just test against all of them. All the other settings here are optional and depending on what policies you have, you'll definitely wanna set some of this. Starting with known locations. And this would be something like your on-prem IP address ranges or VPN ranges, or you could choose all the IPs from a specific country. Then the device type that the user would be signing in from. The list of cloud apps like browsers and even more, along with device states, which are apparently deprecated. I don't know about you, but I must've missed the memo on that one. Moving on to user and service principal risk. 
These all have to do with the level of trust that you have for any authentication request. An example would be signing in from a corporate device is less risky than from a internet cafe. Then you can choose from a bunch of device properties, like if the device is marked as compliant and has a registered device as the profile type. And then you click the what if button and at the bottom you'll get your results. And as you can see, all users are required for MFA, so that got applied. But under the policies that would not apply, we've got the one that we had for our devices. Now, why is that? Well, it tells us right here, it's because there is a device platform that's set and that wasn't in our policy. So if we scroll up and just remove that, scroll back down, hit what if again, and now the policy will apply. And of course, if you wanna specify more stringent rules in your policies, then you can come back and check what if and make sure everything's cool. And with the 14 most popular policies, you'll definitely find what you need or at least be able to tweak it for your environment in just a few seconds. And with that what if to guide you, conditional access policies will be a total breeze. And if you want more on Azure AD identity and security, go ahead and click right over here and happy learning.